Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another presentation in our commas rules series on using commas with direct quotations. So basically, with commas and quotation marks, the rules are that they are used in dialogue and direct quotes. The rule states that a dialogue is a conversation between two or more people. If the speaker, not the listener, in the conversation is identified, his name or the noun or pronoun used to refer to the speaker and the verb that refers to his speaking are enclosed within commas. Okay, let's pause for a moment and break this down a little bit more. First, let's go over some basic punctuation marks. These guys right here the, look like two backwards commas and then two apostrophes together. These are quotation marks that we are referring to. Oftentimes, students get them confused with these guys, which are called parentheses. They are not the same thing, and quotation marks have their own indications and rules with commas that we will go over in this presentation. Some of the ways that quotation marks are used are to indicate the title of a short piece of work. So this could be like a short story, an episode of a television show, a song title, a poem, a different type of formatting, italics or underline are used for longer pieces of work. Quotation marks are also used to refer to words as words and not necessarily their meaning. So for instance, if you were to define a word, like we have here, asana in quotation marks means pose in Sanskrit. Scare quotes, direct quotes, and quotation marks are finally used in dialogue. There's more information on most of this in another presentation specifically on quotation marks. But for now, we are going to focus on how commas are used when you have quotation marks in a sentence. So one of the questions that students get hung up on a lot of times, or even writers in general, does punctuation come inside or outside of quotation marks? Well, the general rule with commas specifically is that commas usually come before the quotation marks. So if you're thinking, well, you didn't answer my question, that's because it's not as direct as that. Here you have an example of a quotation. Quotation mark, you should try the writing center, comma, quotation mark, suggested Amelia. See here how the comma is before the quotation mark and it's inside. When we flip this around and we have Amelia suggested first, we have the comma and then the quotation mark still, but this time the comma is outside of the quotation marks. Here we have what is called a split quote splitting up the sentence that we are quoting. Quotation marks, you should, comma, quotation mark, Amelia suggested, comma, quotation mark, try the writing center, period, quotation mark. Generally speaking, once again, the comma comes before the quotation mark, regardless of whether or not it is inside or outside, depending on where the quote is in the sentence. Let's look briefly at capitalization and quotation marks when you're splitting with commas. Capitalization rules for quotation marks essentially state that you capitalize the beginning of a new sentence, but you do not capitalize a split quote that continues a sentence. So let's, let's look at some examples. You would not capitalize here. Obviously, you capitalize the Y in you because it's starting off a sentence. You should, comma, quotation mark, Amelia suggested, comma, quotation mark, try the writing center. Notice that the T in try is not capitalized because if you took away Amelia suggested, 
it would be one sentence and you would not capitalize a random word in the middle of a sentence. However, you do capitalize if you are splitting up two sentences in a quote. So for instance, we have, I find the writing center very helpful, comma, quotation mark, Amelia said, comma, quotation mark, capital Y-O-U should try it. Here we have two sentences. If you were to put them together, it would look this way. And you always capitalize the first word of a sentence. Let's look briefly at end punctuation. Periods and commas ending a sentence go inside the quotation mark with the exception of when you have an in-text citation. So for example, here, if we were quoting something from a works cited page that or a source that we had cited on a works cited page like this, this is merely an example sentence. You surround the direct quoting quotation marks, but your period comes after your source. Colons, semicolons, and dashes usually go outside of quotation marks and question marks and exclamation marks go inside if applied to the quote and outside if not. So here's a quick example. Ashley asked, when is your semester over? That question mark is part of the question that Ashley is asking and therefore it goes inside the quotation marks. Here we have, did Ashley say, don't be late? Here we have the speaker asking you a question about what Ashley said. Odds are Ashley did not pose that as a question, but posed it more as a statement, which is why it goes on the outside. Now, if this slide seems a little bit confusing to you, there will be more information on capitalization and more punctuation with quotations in a presentation exclusively on quotation marks. For now, I hope you have a better understanding on how to use commas with quotes. And if you still find yourself confused, as always, please make an appointment in the Writing Center and your collaborators will be happy to help you. Happy writing, everyone.